Savita's death has stirred Ireland. Anti and pro life supporters are now engaged in a heated debate over the anti abortion law, tilting the scales heavily in favour of the unborn child. Headlines today is the first channel to arrive in Dublin, where people have taken to the streets to demand justice for Savita and her family. Our correspondent Lavina Tundon caught up with several pro abortion activists, pro choice activists, as a matter of fact, who have been fighting for years to abolish the law that ended up taking Savita's life. We have also learned that more such protests and candlelight vigils are being organized in Dublin and their demand is simple, order an independent probe, punish those guilty of what can only be termed as murder and shed clarity on the abortion law in the country. We asked, we've been calling for an, investiga an independent investigation into this. But I think the fact that successive governments have failed to do this, even though they um, currently are under mandate from the European Court of Human Rights, is that a lot of it is cowardice and hypocrisy. And they like to say that Ireland is abortion free. Um, but abortion in Ireland is a reality. It's exactly the same as most other European countries. The only difference is that Irish, um, the abortions don't take place here. In order to force the government uh, to listen to us and uh, to bring that legislation in, we are going to need people power on the streets. And I anticipate there are going to be large numbers on the streets over the coming days because they are so angry at the outrageous uh, situation that allowed uh, Savita's death. We need legislation in Ireland to explain to doctors how they can apply this test laid down by the Supreme Court in order to stop any future tragic deaths and to say also that all of us here in Ireland feel such immense grief and outrage and sympathy at the loss of Savita. It's just such a tragic death and our thoughts and feelings and condolences go to her family, her husband and her family in India. In Dublin I find that the tragic death of Savita has sparked off a raging debate about the entire issue of abortion. At least the women here seem to understand the bitter reality that a law dated back to 1861 has killed Savita. Now, is this law effective in this country itself? No, because if an Irish woman wants an abortion, she simply travels to England, a luxury that Savita, with her failing health, could not exercise. Now the question being asked here, as in India, is will the government uh, clarify the law within the month as promised or as critics say, in the fear of a backlash from the conservative pro-abortionists, the government will only drag its feet? Levina Tandon for headlines today from Dublin. Well, let me now go across to Lavina, who joins us from Dublin for more on the story. Lavina, in 1992, there was an amendment, uh, uh, there was a Supreme Court diktat which said that in extreme cases where the health of the mother is, uh, is at risk, termination of pregnancy is permissible. So why was Savita not given access to abortion despite that amendment being in place? This is one question that has baffled everyone and the answer to this question will only be provided by the two inquiries that are going on and once they are concluded. Now what tragic death of Savita has done is that it has divided Ireland into two lobbies. One that believes that her death occurred because of medical mismanagement and the other uh, because uh, of no uh, access to abortion. Now this basically translates into two lobbies, anti-abortion and pro-abortion lobbies. This divide in Ireland has been there for the past 20 years and no clarity in legislation of abortion of clarity in uh, legislation of abortion more likely has been denied to the Irish people by seven consecutive governments and it is being hoped that Savita's case is the last straw on the camel's back and the government will now be forced to take a decision and provide some clarity to the legislation and possibly provide a legislative framework to the Irish people as far as abortion is concerned and this is hoped that uh, it's going to be coming through by the end of this month or just after. Right. Uh, also, Lavina, this entire tragic incident has sparked off the debate of pro-life and anti-life in Ireland. Uh, tell us what is really expected today. We understand there are some protests uh, planned by activists. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister has also said there needs to be a relook at the existing laws. What's going to happen today? 
There is a very big vigil being organized in Dublin and also in Galway, but this is not the first time that a vigil is being organized or has happened. Also spontaneously vigils happen just when the uh, news of her death ha was broken in the newspapers. And so there were 2,500 people who collected just in Dublin and there were people protesting in Belfast, Cork and also Galway. But this particular vigil in Dublin is expected this time to attract about 10,000 people. People's power, that is what is needed for the rights to abortion movement in Ireland and that is exactly what Savita's story has done for this cause. It just might be that in her death she has salvaged the Irish women and what they had been fighting for for 20 years, maybe her death might just uh, get the clarity in the legislation of abortion. Now, it, I must say at this point in time that abortion or right to abortion is a far cry still for Irish women. But what activists are hopeful of this time is that uh, there will be some clarity in the present law where access to abortion when mother's life is at risk and risk of um, suicide is going to be included and clarified.